Okay, so today I'm going to show you guys how to set up the two basic Ethernet networks that are available using RS Links, a Rockwell automation program. To open up RS Links, the first thing we do is to go to the Start button at the bottom left hand side of the screen, click it. Now, mine is at my RS Links Classic is actually in my, right here in my Quick Links, um, but oftentimes, if this is the first time you're opening it up, it's good to go to Programs. You come over, you find your Rockwell software. We got a bunch of Rockwell software here. So we uh, click on RS Links. We expand that out. Come down here to RS Links Classic. This is probably the most common RS Links program out there. And it's used for connecting your PC to the PLCs that are available on the network. Now we're going to set up the two types of Ethernet networks that are available through RS Links. The first one is a very general one so to open up and to create the drivers that will actually be used for the Ethernet oftentimes referred to as the Ethernet drivers you come up here to configure drivers it's the snake looking thing at the top left hand side of your, top left hand portion of your uh, toolbar you click on it and it says driver t available driver types so what we want to do is we want to click on this icon here and drag it down now you can see here that there are two Ethernet options here. We have Ethernet devices and Ethernet IP driver. This is the one that we use the most in my classroom um, until we start working on our final projects and we use the Ethernet devices. So we're going to go ahead and start off with Ethernet IP drivers. We click on this, select add new, and I'm just going to give it a name here. Teacher 1. I'm going to hit OK. And here it's going to ask you, what do you want to use for your IP settings? And we can use the window default here. That's totally fine for, at least in our classroom, depending on what you guys are doing in your classroom. Totally depends. But in here, we can go ahead and click the Windows default. We hit OK. And we're, it, it'll pop up as running, status running here. That's good. And you'll notice right here, um, your uh, teacher... Uh, one internet is now available so we'll close out our configure drivers and we're gonna expand this out now this will come up and this will show all of the different PLCs and in case in this case touch screens that we have on the network so you can see here that we have a number of uh, PLCs that are etherneted together showing their IP addresses which ones are available and um, this one is actually a uh, compact logic PLC and this the icon shows up a little bit differently and then we have four touch screens that are currently plugged in and it shows their IP, the IP addresses that are associated with them this is the first type and the most basic type of Ethernet IP uh, driver that we have available to us now I'm going to show you how we create the second type which is a little more specified so in this case what I'm going to do is I go back to my configure drivers I'm going to go to my available driver types and this time I'm going to select Ethernet devices so I click on that I select add new again this time I'll give it a different name I like to specify my uh, drivers just in case there's multiple drivers on my RS links it really helps me to keep everything organized so I'll identify this as teacher 2 I'm going to select OK now this one's going to ask you for a specific IP address, um, the IP address that is specific for the PLC that you're using. So the IP address that I'm going to look up, I'm going to go for right now is 192.168.1.111. Now this is the uh, PLC that I'm going to be using. If you're using a uh, PLC with a different IP address, you have to be able to find that first. You should talk to your instructor, um, or hopefully it's labeled actually on the PLC that you're using. So once you have the IP address in here, go ahead and enter. Now I found that some quirky things can happen here with uh, the second uh, group of numbers right here. Sometimes you have to put 001 in, sometimes you don't. You just put 1 in there depending on how your IP address is set up. Um, so in this case, I know this works, so I'll just leave it at point 0.1. If I want to put multiple PLCs 
or touch screens or any other Ethernet driven device, I can go ahead and start typing in multiple IP addresses. But in this case, we're just going to use one PLC. So I'm going to come down here, I'm going to hit OK. And now this one is running. So I close out my configure drivers. I expand my driver to. It'll take a second to go out and search for it. It comes up as showing, all right, it sees the uh, IP address, the specific one that I typed in. And it's showing me that I'm using a Micrologic 1400. And that inside of there, there's an untitled program. Now let's look at the differences between these two types of IP drivers. Uh, Ethernet drivers. So my first one that I created went out and searched for every type of uh, PLC, any basically any Rockwell Automation or Allen Bradley product that has an IP address. And it found five Micrologic 1400s, one um, Compact Logic and L35E, and it found four touchscreens. And inside of this, this will show everything here. This is very good if we want all of these to be networked together. In our classroom, we have 13 computers that are tied to our uh, PLC network. So it's good for us to be able to kind of go back and forth. And my students have the ability to change up PLCs very easy if theirs is broken or if somebody's using it at the time because we, uh, each student has to share a PLC with another person. Um, now, the second Ethernet network that I set up. This is a little bit different. This only goes out and this doesn't search the entire network to see what's out there. It goes specifically to the IP address that's there that you typed in. And if it's not there, it's not going to find anything. Now, this is a common thing that you see in the classroom when the Ethernet driver or the Ethernet IP address that you typed in isn't there. Let's say the power's gone off, something's gone bad with the Ethernet cord, something like that. What'll typically happen is um, the IP address will show up with an X running through it, indicating that there's a problem, like this right here. I just unplugged the Ethernet going to this um, actual address, and it's being Xed out. Now, it doesn't disappear. It wants you to know that it was there, okay um, to let you know that hey there's a problem with this PLC maybe the powers off to it maybe an Ethernet cord has a problem with it. it's been cut unplugged something like that and so to fix the problem we go over we uh, figure out where the issue lies with some basic troubleshooting techniques and when we plug it back in if you give it a second it goes away just like that um, and this is how we set up the two basic Ethernet um, IP drivers in your RS Links program. There are many other driver types available as you can see here. We're not going to get into all of them today. For my class we basically use the two Ethernet device, we use the two types of Ethernet drivers. And then the other really common one is the RS-232. You still see this in a lot of factories um, because people are still hooking up through serial ports which we can do on this PLC but we don't do that anymore. And then there's other ones that are used in different factories in different scenarios depending on the type of network that the uh, company is set up all right well that's a little bit on how we set up the uh, rs links classic we have to do this before we ever start programming as soon as we have wired up our plc and we have um, our ethernet cord wired to it and we've assigned it an ip address this is uh, the next step, getting your Ethernet, set, uh, Ethernet network set up so your PC can talk to your PLC. That's your programming device. In this case, is just a basic desktop computer, and we're going to run these to a Micrologic 1400. All right. Thank you.